Hello and welcome to a special edition of Neighborhood Nature. This is a four-part series where we are featuring our guest botanist, Tabea. And this is part four where we are going to be talking about moss. You can find the recordings of Neighborhood Nature, including this special four-part Neighborhood Nature, on our YouTube page. So Tabea, let's talk about moss. Moss are my absolute favorite plant group. Um, they are super interesting. They're super tiny, um, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds. We live in a very specific environment, so um, they're very fun to kind of hunt out and ID. Well, very tricky. Um, they're, we think that they're the earliest land plants. Um, so they're the first plant that came to land from their ancestral kind of ocean algae. Um, they reproduce through different structures called sporophytes. So if you see a moss on the ground, you can see a little brown structure with kind of a nodding capsule at the top. Um, those will be the sporophytes, and they release spores, and then those germinate into new moss. Um, moss can be divided into three groups. Um, you have the biophytes, or the moss, the uh, mercantiophytes, or the liverworts, and the anthocircophyta, or the hornworts. Uh, hornworts are that's common and a little harder to see, so usually you'll notice either biophytes or moss or uh, liverworts. Um, biophytes are super tiny. Um, usually to ID them, you need help with a, a microscope, uh, usually a dissecting and a compound microscope. So you need magnification of between 4 and, I guess, 40 and 400 times magnification. Um, that's how small their leaves are. Sometimes when you're at 400 magnification, you can still only see the leaf, not the cell, which is very, very tiny. Um, but yeah, they're really interesting. Um, they have no root system, like I said, um, and so they uh, grow as kind of epiphytes or um, just kind of on top of surfaces. Um, a big part of their ID is what they're growing on, and so there's some really fun science words that um, describe their their substrate that they're growing on. And so <laughs> for rocks, it's saxiculus. For wood, it's corticulus. For soil, it's terriculus. Oh, there's one more, but I forget the last one. But I just, those are, I think, my favorite science words because they're absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I love them. What is, this, what is the little tiny one that you're holding in your hands, this cute little green one? I don't know what that one is. A lot of them are. They're hard to get down to um, even like genus, not even, or even family sometimes. <laughs> wow. um, so you can just call it cushion moss if you'd like. <laughs> it's very cute. Um, I never yeah. thought I'd say a moss was cute, but it's super cute. <laughs> it is. I think they're really cute plants. Um, and then the liverworts, um, the most common one that you'll see is, uh, I think, Marcantia. It's the genus name, and it's got these huge um, thalluses, or kind of leaf-like structures. Um, and then you can kind of see a diamond-shaped pattern on the surface, and then they reproduce by sending up these little umbrella-looking things um, that kind of produce the spores, um, or they will reproduce asexually um, uh, by producing um, gemmae, uh, which is like a little like packet of cells that kind of splashes out and then germinates into a new plant, and then it'll be in this little cup-like structure um, called a splash cup. And so if you see um, like a, what you think might be a liverwort, and it has that little circle on the top. It's, that's the uh, asexual reproductive organ. Yeah, they're really cool. Yeah. So the moss that I've seen in our backyard, there's been moss on the soil, and we have seen mm -hmm. some moss on the ground where we have a lot of water. So if anyone is wanting to see moss, where would they go in the St. Albert, Edmonton area? Mm -hmm. You can go quite literally anywhere. They're very successful. Um, they they grow by microhabitat, and so you really have to get down on your hands and knees and look closely. Um, but usually if you look for a shaded area um, that has a lot of high moisture, um, so if you have like a rain barrel or kind of near the bottom of your deck, or if you're out for a walk and you near the base of a tree, um, there can be moss all over there. Um, the ones that grow in soil are really easy to find. You can find mosses growing on rocks as well, um, even up to the highest mountain. I've seen moss growing at like 2,000 meters elevation, um, like completely exposed, completely desiccated, um, and they're just doing their own thing. Um, you can look on tree trunks. Um, sometimes they're growing on fallen logs. Um, 
sometimes along the margins of uh, streams or uh, running water or like ponds. Um, yeah, they're everywhere. You just have to kind of look really closely because they're easy to miss. Something that we've seen in our backyard are what looks like moss and fungi growing together. And I think you have a picture of it here, but it's like fungi that's kind of brown and sheet like. Is yeah, are they so, growing together for a reason or do they just happen to be there in uh, the same spot? Those guys are probably just sharing the same habitat because they uh, have the same niche. Um, I think what you're describing is actually um, a lichen. There's a really common lichen called Peltigera. Um, it's often mistaken for a liverwort, just because um, sometimes they're both green and they have the same kind of phalloid structure um, or, or like leaf-like structure. Um, and yeah, moss and lichen are often grouped together in um, field books or books about plants just because they have such similar habitats and kind of life cycles. Um, even though they're completely different and they do different things, um, you can often find them together. And our listeners, don't be disappointed if you can't identify the moss or the lichen. It's, as Tabea has mentioned, it's very, very hard. But definitely take the time and look closely because they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, moss and lichen and fungi are kind of on the outside of the plant world just because they're not as easily identifiable or uh, noticeable to like the average person. But I think it's well, well worth looking at them just because um, once you kind of learn to train your eye to see all these different types of life around you, it's absolutely beautiful, the diversity that you can kind of see around you, even in your backyard. Um, and you can really kind of recognize the complex ecosystems that grow absolutely everywhere around you. Really rewarding. And that's part of what we've shared on Neighborhood Nature. We, we like to focus also on the things that people might not actually look at, sort of the underdogs of the nature world. So we're so happy that you took the time to come and be a guest on Neighborhood Nature. Thanks again, Tabea. And next week's Neighborhood Nature, 7 p.m. on Wednesday, and we look forward to seeing you all. Thank you.